Hi guys, I'm Jay and this is Vroom Vroom. Welcome back to the channel. We're back on the Honda NT700 DeVille and the uh, restoration. Uh, this video via primarily just uh, focuses on the back end of it, the wheel refurbishment, the swing arm refurbishment, uh, the back bits and some of the challenges that are faced well, by me and uh, maybe by you if you're doing something similar. So hope you enjoy the video. If you do, please like, share, subscribe. It's really important to me. And uh, enjoy the video. So a few things to catch up on, um, but nothing major. The top part of the frame just had a um, bit of a wire wheel going over it. Got rid of all of the loose rust and um, flakes bits and bobs and it's just had a light coating in a uh, a frame paint which is just drying at the moment um, next part is to pull the back wheel off clean all of that up respray the back wheel respray the input shaft which is really really in a poor state along with the uh, the wishbone uh, it all seems to be surface rust, but it just needs cleaning off, recoating, and uh, then that part will be good to go. So I will uh, document some of that. But taking it apart has been just methodical. Um, not too bad. It's the light got the inner liner off the top, but it was just proving more trouble than it's worth. And for what I needed access for, it just wasn't worth pursuing any further uh, I've got rid of the majority of the cobwebs um, they haven't all gone but we'll get that as we go along so at the moment it all seems to be going okay but uh, we'll plod on and see what happens next so this is a week or two later and um, yep got frustrated at certain parts of this um, bolts just refusing to come out I've just had to get the back wheel off which involved using the angle grinder to cut through one of the bolts holding a bracket because it just was not having it so it's definitely fighting me all of the way the uh, the pin in the caliper I've just chucked a load of WD-40 on just to ease it off a little bit because I need to get that out uh, and that's an absolute must otherwise there'll be no brake pads and I'm sure you agree that'd be quite bad um on the inside so the swing arm does look very corroded but it's um just surface all of it's just surface i've had a little dig around with a screwdriver and it doesn't seem as bad as i thought it might be when i was um looking from the before i took the wheel off so the priority now is to clean that up and give it a coat of paint and um, get the pin out of this and the bolt which you can just see there on the left of the exhaust halfway up the screen that out as well um, tried heat on it it's not having it I had my heavy duty impact gun on it was not having it so it may have to be drilled uh, which won't be an ideal solution especially as the threads in the swing arm rather than the bracket so um, I've got a stud extraction tool coming so that should be here tomorrow uh, we'll give that a go that will be my first attempt on with one of those so I will film it and let you know how I get on and how easy it is um, from an honest point of view and we'll see how we go from there next job is to remove the lower wishbone well, the only wishbone on the motorbike um, so because this is direct drive it only comes in from one side which is this left hand side behind the cap there judging on how all of the other bolts have been on the bike this is going to be a little bit of a pig to remove and I've also got to remove the brake lines uh, that are attached as well so that's two allen keys by the look of it and judging on how every bolt's fought me on this this is going to be an issue as well 
I did. I did. I did give uh, the back a little bit of a clean, and it's come up quite well. Um, give it a little bit more rub down before we spray it. Uh, just for context, the lower wishbone is meant to be the same colour as that, it's a silver, but all of the uh, the coatings come off of it during this time off. Also, I have um, refurbished the wheel, the back wheel. Uh, we'll have a look now. And this is the wheel now, uh, which is 100 times better than it was. Unfortunately, I ran out of paint on this one. I've still got the front to do, but um, I found this paint really good. It's a German product, so it's a little bit more expensive. But I'm going to uh, order myself another can now. Uh, I had it before on another bike, and it lasted really well. The um, shock absorber came out with a little bit of gentle persuasion from my trusty shock absorber remover bolt tool. The um, the one now I'm about holding the swing arm in came off quite reasonably. Um, you can see now that the oxygen sensor goes through the swing arm, so I'm going to have to disconnect that. And the uh, seems to be another one. Nope, that goes to the back. That's fine. Um, and I pulled it off the spline, which is there. So once I disconnect the oxygen sensor, that should come out quite easily. The uh, two bolts holding the brake lines in place, again, come out quite easily. So I'm literally a couple of minutes away from being able to pull this out, getting a better look at it, and um, start refurbishing it. And just a couple of minutes later, there we are. So, actually looks worse than it is. We'll give it a grind down and see what the damage really is. You can just see the bolt down there that I've got to remove, even though I'm not, I'm thinking now of not removing it, but drilling through it. And, um, some kind of setup on the other side. I'm sure that'll come to me with some kind of idea of how to avoid that because that's, um, if I'm right, that goes to quite a big thread on uh, just on this side. On this side, so uh, we will see. But now I've got it off, I may have a better chance of removing it anyway. So we'll see. Right, so this is just a couple of minutes later with the uh, wire wheel and so much better already. Um, nowhere near done yet, but what I did notice was before I took the uh, before I took it off, I was noticing a lot of play in the whole of the uh, in the arm. So I've taken these out of there and there's a needle bearing one each side and uh, one side was okay the other side not quite so okay so it does explain the uh, excess movement in there so I'm gonna order one of those or we'll order both of those as well for placing both of them while it's out and um, So I'm back on the Deville, um, waiting on parts for the ST. So I thought I'd crack on with this and oh, some good news for a change. The uh, swing arm is back in. Uh, I just need to give it a little bit of a clean now because I've got my dirty finger marks all over it. Uh, the bearing I got out and managed to push the new one in. That Pushing in was easy, taking it out was a bitch. It took days. Um, the the uh, bolt for the caliper got out. You saw the bit on that. It was just grinding. I ended up drilling and punching and swearing. And yeah, but got it out in the end. And the uh, thread on it isn't too bad. So um, 
typical that I bought a brand new tap and die set and the uh, it doesn't go up to that size. But uh, looking at it, I think the thread's okay to get a bolt in, so we'll see when that bolt gets here, which is also an order, £20 just for one bolt. That's ridiculous. So today's jobs are going to be um, buttoning up the back end, really. Uh, I'm going to take this bracket off, give it a clean and a spray. Uh, that shouldn't take too long once I take the ABS sensor out. Um, I want to be able to stick the back wheel on today. The shock absorber has been done back up. The, um, the input shaft was a nightmare. Went to put the swing arm back in. It was just was not having it. It was going in crooked. And it turned out that on this end of the input shaft, the, um, the, the nut that holds it all together was completely off and around the wrong way. So I don't know how that happened because I didn't take it off. And I wouldn't have thought that it would have got much traction without it. So I just have no idea what happened there. So it's been reassembled, put on. I've got to put some gear roll back in there. But that will be um, uh, a job for later on today after the wheel's back in. So that's it. Um, good news today. Uh, it's, that's the swing arms had a coat of black. It was silver before and didn't like it. It, it looked just out of place. So black is the way to go and uh yeah let's crack on whip that off uh i'll do that now and we'll see how that bit goes right so if you do take the swing arm off you have to remember the oxygen sensor actually goes through the hole at the back of the uh the swing arm which is why it's good idea to take some pictures when you're taking it off um so the bracket I've now sprayed and it's drying nicely over here. A minute or two, that should be good to go. And then uh, should be okay. There's a slight rim uh, lip on the uh, old disc on the back. So I've just taken that down with the grinder slightly. Uh, it only took a couple of seconds. It wasn't very big, but it was bugging me. And the caliper pistons, I'm not too sure about. I've given them a bit of a clean up, uh, but I couldn't get that. I couldn't get in that well to the underneath. So I'm going to give that another go before I try and push the pistons back. Because if they are really bad and you take them back, it's going to compromise the seals. So we'll do that as well before I get on with them. Um, refitting it and I have to try and remember how to put all the top bits back on and check all the bulbs so yeah quite a list one job leads to another job just had a look and the ABS ring looks atrocious so I'm going to give that a clean up as well so a little bit of wet and dry and uh Nobody likes a dirty ring, do they? So the question is, I don't really want to leave it like that because it's just going to rust. So I think I'm going to put a bit of lacquer on it. That is a decision that I could live to regret if the AWS uh, ABS doesn't work. But we'll see. Right, so I've put the uh, the disc back on, and uh, the wheel's now, <laughs> I think, ready to go back. So a couple of things to remember before I do, because we don't want to be keep taking this on and off, is this bit is greasing. I'm going back in here. That sits in there. Got the guide for the back wheel. Yeah, that was pretty gritty. So I didn't want to put that back on like that because it's just going to wreck it. You know what? I was laying in bed last night and I was thinking, do not forget to put the plastic O-ring 
back on the direct drive because that would be really stupid. And guess what I forgot to do? At the end of the road, could have got a lot further with it, but just to make things easier. does look better still got the carrier to put on for the caliper on the uh, exhaust side but I'm just going to offer this up see if it'll sit in there if it does great if it doesn't then I'll get the um, the bolt and the, the caliper carrier and we'll do it that way And she stays. <sighs> Jobs are good. <clears throat> right, so. caliper carrier can't actually go back in yet because I took the, um, the ABS sensor bolts off to try and remove it but like everything else that's been on this bike that was really just not going to have it and I would have destroyed it trying to get it out so I left it back in there but I haven't put the bolts back in so I'm going to put that in now um, and that should be the last thing I need before uh, trying to stick the bolt through the wheel Right, so I've got to move the exhaust up. Okay, just enough. So what we'll need. Right, so I did a bit off the camera, but um, because it was a bit fiddly and it was dragging on a little bit, so I didn't want to waste too much time uh, recording. So I took the exhaust off enough to get the bolt through. Uh, before I did that, I took the carrier back off and stuck the other washer in this side. Because um, I know if I don't mention that, some of the more eagle-eyed amongst you might pull me up on that. So the back wheel is actually in situ now, so... It's good, and what was even better was when I stuck the bolt for a nice big blob of grease coming out the other side, so that's very well lubricated. So uh, that's quite good. I'm still waiting on that bolt, like I mentioned, for the uh, the, the uh, carrier, the brake carrier. But I'll just take you around. What you can see is that 
the furbish wheel looks really really nice on there and uh, once we get the buttoning up done on the back we'll be able to move on to the front that's just a little bit grimy with the grease but that's not a bad thing it just shows that it's been uh, greased up enough so that's that bit for now what I'm going to do is just stick the um, the foot pegs back on I'm going to run the cables down um, for the brake caliper and I'm going to give the brake caliper just another clean with a toothbrush a bit of wet and dry try and get underneath those uh, those piss the caliper pots and uh, give them one last clean before I push them back attempt to push them back back brake was horrendous on this before and you couldn't even press the, the pedal without it just staying down so uh, hopefully with everything that I've done that will cure that but we'll see shortly right so I've given that another going over the toothbrush and some brake fluid and uh, now's the time to push the pistons back just to make sure that they're functioning okay so I'm going to use my Honda approved piston retraction tool and uh, we'll see if we can get them back. And the answer is no. So I did get the pistons moving. Um, I cracked the bleed nipple and took it back that way. Uh, this is just through years and years of no use. So we'll put it back on, we'll see how it operates. Um, in fact, what I think I'm going to do is put the... Uh, the back brake assembly back on give it some pumps and see uh, if I can then move it back within the steer uh, the caliper a bit easier uh, save time rather than putting it all back together than taking it all off again so we'll see how that grows so back brakes are actually working now the calipers the uh, piston pots are going back in and out quite easily um, well with enough resistance to be normal did you know you've got to have the uh, carrier out to get the uh, caliper on before you fit the wheel you did why didn't you tell me I've now got to take the back wheel off again to get the caliper onto the carrier and then put it all back together again luckily I didn't tighten anything up but um, yeah things to avoid So, remember to put the rubber back in that's mounting for the uh, lower caliper. The bolt's in at the top, not done up yet. The carrier's in, but I'm just about to stick the bolt through. Uh, moral of the story is, you want to take things apart, put them back as quickly as possible because you remember where everything goes. And um, also, don't do multiple projects at once because you get mixed up between the two. Anyway, that's on now. Uh, I'm going to stick the big bolt back through. And um, hopefully that's the last time it's got to go through. Uh, <laughs> he says, touch wood. We'll see. Right, so the uh, caliper's on. The brake pad's fitted. Um, I'm going to just bolt the lines in for the back caliper to the swing arm. Reconnect the ABS sensor. Stick a bolt in for the exhaust. And then wait for the uh, the pin to arrive uh, once that's here. Then I can just button the back up completely. So all in all, not bad. Not bad at all. Could have been worse. Touch wood. So just a quick update on the NT700. Um, bolt came from the swing arm, went straight in, which was really good. Um, so that means the caliper's on properly and I was able to button up the exhaust get that done 
uh, it's clean it's got new brake pads in it as you can see the um, only thing I'm waiting on now just to make life a little bit easier is I'm going to change the gear oil in the final drive so I'm just waiting on that oil to arrive now I've been told it's out for delivery once that's done I can start rebuilding the back and then concentrate on the front um, hopefully it won't give as many challenges as the back did but um, the as far as the back goes on the home straight now and there was yeah that was that was hard but hopefully the front will be easier well that's where we're going to leave this one uh, I do hope you enjoyed it um, and uh, make sure you subscribe for the next part of the Honda DeVille restoration